Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi and welcome to the Thursday Texas Fly Fishing Report. It is Thursday, March 12th, 2015. And we've got kind of a mixture, mixture of weather here right now with clouds coming and going, so I kind of had to move. If you haven't ever watched before, you may not know we're at the Fly Bar, which is my own personal bar in my backyard. But uh, from here, we've put out stories about fly fishing in Texas, and specifically the Texas Fly Fishing Report that comes out on Thursday, sometime on Thursday, and is in just in time for the weekend if you're into fly fishing here in Texas. Last week I reported to you from Houston, Texas where I was uh, visiting and fly fishing right outside of Lake Houston on the north side there and if you look back um, there's a report on that but let me tell you I went out again on Saturday there's hopefully I haven't looked at the video but hopefully there's some video that uh, will be good enough to actually put on the end of this broadcast telling you or showing you some of the uh, conditions in the creeks there that feed into Lake Houston. As I look through the internet and I research and try to find different information to bring you, of course, a lot of it comes from Facebook and a lot of the fly fishing guys on the Texas coast are on Facebook. You can find them. I have a list of those guys in a previous post and they are still doing quite well. I get the feeling since I'm not seeing a lot right now on Facebook that they're actually out there fishing. This is a year in Texas along the Gulf Coast where it hardly ever got cold enough to actually shut off the fishing per se. And the fly fishing in general has been pretty good throughout the coast throughout the winter time. So you're just going to be looking for it to pick up now. As temperatures warm and the water warms up, the, the fish will start coming out of those guts and out of those deeper waters and back up onto the flats. So keep your eyes out for that. Spring has sprung here in Texas, in North Texas. You can hear the birds are chirping. We've had a few days of rain. East Texas is getting an unfair amount of rain these days. It's raining there today, and I can see the clouds off in the distance towards East Texas. So those guys have got a locomotive of rain going out there that is really drenching that area of the state. So that's a great fertile place to fly fish. Always check my Instagram. You'll see the... For example, chain pickerel from Dangerfield and things like that that are unusual for the South and in Texas in general. But uh, if you ever want to do something like that, be sure and let me know and I'll, I'll contact me and I'll give you all the information you need on that. Otherwise, here in North Texas, we're still a little bit cold. But uh, what I'm going to do is pick apart these lakes nearby and start moving further and further away as time goes by. So I picked apart Lake Ray Roberts ad nauseum, and it's low, it's so low in fact that I don't see any reason to spend a whole lot of time there this spring, but spring is coming on, so we're going to go to Louisville Lake, it's also called Lake Dallas, and we're going to pick that thing apart from top to bottom, north to south, and show you everything that uh, we can find on fly fishing on a huge, not so huge, but big Texas lake. So be sure you keep your eyes open for that. And, you know, I'll, as time goes by, if we get a little more rain, if I have the time, I'll go ahead and continue that information on fishing the different water columns with fly for bass. Because that's, you know, one of our main things is carp, bass, and buffalo. And then we're going to go off and actually, like, search for gar and things like that this year, which is, which is the biggest fish you can get in fresh water around here. So gar are one of those things that nobody spends a lot of time on. It's incidental most often. There are people that actually specialize in it, but uh, we're going to see how that goes. Got definitely takes a, a different mindset to catch gar on fly. Well, I hope you have a great day, a great weekend. Um, there's plenty of more information on my website where spring is here and it's, we're headed into the best times here in North Texas for fly fishing. And I would say that East Texas, if you want to go somewhere right now, is a place to be with all the fresh water, the temperate weather, and fresh rains. 
that area should be just turned completely on. A lot of those lakes are at capacity. If you read the Water Wednesday report, that'll tell you kind of in a big picture way what the wet, the uh, the rain has been like in the lakes or, and, and different rivers systems are like in Texas. So have a great weekend. Contact me if you have any questions. Perhaps there'll be something at the end of this. I haven't checked my video yet from my GoPro, but there might be some uh, sand bass action at the end of this. So kind of look for that after the credits. It's kind of one of those blooper reels at the end of the thing. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hey guys, it's Saturday morning and we're going to get a second helping of that creek action over north side of Lake Houston. So I've been talking to my friend Danny Scarborough. He is a, a guide here in the Houston area. His website is www.houstonflyfishing.com. So we're going to go hook up with Danny and see if we can catch some more fish in these uh, creeks over there by the wilderness, the Lake Houston Wilderness uh, Park. So hop in, let's go for a ride. As you can see in these creeks, they're pretty low for this time of year and the amount of rain we had there in the uh, Houston area. But uh, what we do is just carefully wade these creek bottoms and look for holes and spots that were kind of undercut and had roots around them and you can dead drift or you can actually strip these flies in we're using clousers you can strip them in real slow and uh, have a lot of success um, there was a lot of small sand bass and a few large ones and this is one that's Danny Scarborough catching a, a really nice sized sand bass and uh, he actually caught one bigger than that that weighed two pounds so there's plenty of fish in there uh, you might have to work your way through the small ones, but uh, that's what it looks like. I hope you had a good time watching the video on catching sand bass in the creeks north of Lake Houston. Uh, I have to put a special shout out to my friend Danny Scarborough. You saw him in the video. Great guy and is always a, a great host to me when I go fishing in the Houston area. Danny, you can find him at www.houstonflyfishing.com. I hope you guys had a good time. If you have any questions, let me know. I pretty much outlined all the things you need to know in a previous post on Texas Flycaster website. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.